Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. One of the books that definitely has been Kayfabe affected to death and, and the last remaining copies are going to disappear, uh, Kaba 2, or uh, Katsuhiro Otomo. We're going to talk about that today. Uh, but got to let you guys know we have a Patreon out there uh, for our biggest supporters. You're watching us stream this recording uh, as we are doing it in real time, completely mitigating that kayfabe effect. And at, at the end of the day, they're going to have access to all the videos before anybody else. So support our channel that way if you like. If not, uh, the, the videos are brought to you by the books that we make. Before you is the bibliography that we have out in the wild as we speak. Uh, I'm soliciting the next round of Red Room Comics, uh, Crypto Killers, Issue 1, to your comic shops now. So let your store know that you want it. Uh, Pre-order that stuff. There are two existing trade paperbacks of Red Room out there. We're celebrating the 10-year uh, anniversary of Hip Hop Family Tree. Uh, X-Men Grand Design is out in the wild. And WYSIWYG. Jimmy has a forthcoming Hulk Grand Design trade paperback coming out at the end of February 2023. Get your hands on that. Put it in your pre-orders. It is disappearing from uh, the Amazon warehouses in other countries. So uh, it is looking uh, like that is going to be a quick sellout. Plain Janes is Jimmy's shoujo manga. And Street Angel Deadliest Girl Alive trade paperback is back in print collecting all of his image comics uh, material from Street Angel series. Uh, without further ado, Jimmy, here's the question, man. Kaba 2. Is it worth it? We'll let you guys at home decide uh, if, uh, if if that's worth it to you, because this is a pretty rare and expensive book at this point, man. Everybody who uh, wanted this book got their hands on it, and they're not letting go. And if they are, it's going to cost you a premium. But I was out there in Japan, I participated in Tokyo Comic Con, and uh, sold some stuff. some Lots of prints, and had uh, Chuck E. Cheese money. You know what I mean? It's nothing I could use back back uh, here in the States. And yen was cheap uh, when we were out there. No tourism happened and all that stuff. So I just allocated some of those funds to getting this book that I always wanted. Had no idea what was in here. And we'll it's crack a beautiful it open. cover. Oh, yeah. You, like, you, got, you got spot gloss. You got debossing. You have embossing. It's so neat. Whenever you do like a little bit of open, I can see it on the monitor as the spot varnish hits the light. Yeah. And it, it almost shimmers across there. Yeah. And it's all the right stuff. It's the zipper. It's all the buttons. Yeah. Very pretty. You know, but he didn't do it on the logo. Like he's a very, uh, he's, he's just a powerful illustrator. We did a video on Kaba, the first one. Uh, ahead of time. I like this piece right here, a little self-portrait from behind, dude, in a hotel room. Has all of his stuff uh, laid out. 2007, I think this might be that time when he did participated in drawing that Italian uh, bicycle okay. race thing. Yeah, it's a shame these things are so hard to get your hands on. Yeah. Um, I said it before we started, this is the first time that I've seen this right. in person, so it's it's very cool and as you say, the books themselves are beautiful. Great big giant art Akira. We see like a lot of this stuff over time. I've never seen this piece before. Stunning reproduction too. And it's the 30th anniversary, so uh, it was presumably made around this time, 30 years after you know making the the in initial anime. Like his whole style and sensibility has changed. You see these buttons, and then it makes you wonder: like, is that is that uh, is that Kaneda there on the cover? Steam Boy. It's interesting, his career, because like, we did that video on cyberpunk not too long ago. Uh, so, Akira, cyberpunk staple, but then he went steampunk with Steam Boy, you know, playing with all the stuff. I'd like to see his splatterpunk uh, efforts. Like, what would that look like? I would love that. <laughs> a lot of Steam Boy work. It makes sense. Tried watching it a couple of times, and I want to give it another go, but I could not fucking sit through it for all of its beauty. Interesting. Yeah, I've never seen it. But I do remember it making quite a bit of noise. Back in the days of, uh, like, I, I probably even run it on um, VHS tape. What is this illustration of? Yeah, it's is for it the, a collage? It's for memories. I, and you know what? I think it actually is. Uh, because I know this piece. It's... No, no, fuck. I think it's, I think it's one piece. It's pretty wild. Yeah. He'll do that. He'll layer various images that he's done over... Because uh, he's, he's good at iconography, creating, like, an unforgettable drawing. And then he will create these collages and kind of do retoolings of uh, his existing artworks. You know, he's <laughs> Man, drawn this a million times. <laughs> Magnetic Rose. That, the Memories book that uh, e, e, Epic put out 
tells the story of the Magnetic Rose story that was in uh, the, the anime. And the cool thing about the anime, if you remember the comic, which we did a video of, this will go up in our Katsuhiro Otomo playlist, uh, when the guys are in a spaceship and they're talking, every panel, the orientation of the astronaut is upside down, mm -hmm. you know, perpendicular, uh, and they capture that in the uh, anime. Like, I think it's a, it's a very cool thing. Wow, the spread for the Memories book, which would be about here, yep. but then it would be French flaps and stuff, so there'd be back cover, French flaps on either side, so you're getting the full the full tapestry. And I actually don't think you get all of it. No way, man. This has to be cut off some. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, like I don't ever remember seeing this. So it's it's like you're getting this much. Well, you know what? It, you know when you would get this is if you're doing the traditional Japanese orientation where this is what we would think of as a back cover. Right. And this would be our, you know, our, our front cover there back. Then it would all it would all fit. Right. Oh, that cover for SOS. This, this, is so, this is such a great cover, man. And this is a way to goose your Instagram. Like if you want to tickle the algorithm. Because uh, like I'll, I'll post this and it, because it, this is a front cover. Back cover, French flaps. So it's like you see this image, a resting image on the front. The back cover is a zoomed out view. Uh, inside French flap of the front is the boys looking down. And then uh, the inside of the flap on the back cover is the dudes descending into a subterranean. I think we could do an episode on this spread. Because you have kind of a static image, right? Yeah. Except it's not static because of these diagonal lines in both of these images. You know, figuring out a way to make dudes standing around doing nothing interesting and dynamic. And then you have like this repeating motif of our circle, right? Whether it's the manhole cover, the flashlight, or the light that's coming down behind them. Yeah. And then what a designer. Just for this piece, we could talk color all day. Yeah. Which are muted hues of the background and your very poppy colors on your on your main focal points. Hmm. Interesting his ability to draw old people. Sure. I have this. It's an album cover. It makes sense. Fits that square page perfectly. It's it's a close-up of the head. You don't get none oh. of this. It's... Psh, psh, psh. That's interesting, too, because you can imagine creating this with, like, oh, you could put the logo here, or you could put tracks, or, you know, whatever other info. Classic Mobius homage. Maybe the third time we saw this piece uh, on the on the video so far. I hope I see it another hundred. Talk about Magnetic Rose, man. <laughs> uh, very much influenced by Stanley Kubrick. There's a little portrait piece, but let's do Jim Cameron as well. You know, mm. with, with all the technology that Cameron, you know, the, um, that stationary camera thing, I forget what that thing's called. I wonder, I wonder what that was for. And then does Cameron own that? Cause you talk about artists doing like uh, certain, certain people as their subject matter. And then those people want to own that piece. Yeah. Man, if Otomo draws you, how do you not try to do everything you can to have that in your collection? Totally. And then like... Katsuhiro, are we just showing off now? That's too much. Too much. There's one for your full moon zine. I'll say. That's a, <laughs> that's a cover image. Playing with digital. <clears throat> yeah. So he's got, uh, it's probably full digital color also, which is like, very rare. You never see that with uh, Katsuhiro Otomo. He's so deft at uh, the practical aspect. But Jimmy, you could probably attest you just did some painting recently. Clean up some motherfucker, is it not? It's definitely, a, 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 I think, a lengthier process. Yeah. It makes sense though him doing multimedia, playing with multimedia, because we see that even in the in his early part of his career. True, I got this. Uh, somebody gifted me the magazine that this turns up in a cover of Brutus magazine. Which when I was out there, uh, Brutus, I think it's a weekly, monthly magazine. Um, I was looking at an issue and they covered the uh, Sabrina cartoonist Nick Dernasso and Chris like Ware. Yeah, they yeah. Did, they did pieces on those dudes. But uh, it was before that war comic that we got. It was the last, uh, the huh. newest Otomo comic from 2007. That's interesting. A Nemo strip. Yeah, I don't know. I never saw that before. Coconino Press, man, the people that did those like oversized, like uh, Zach Sally, uh, Kevin Heisenga comics. So I'm not sure what that's about. Yeah, it must mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. That's beautiful. It's so cool, man. Creating that sepia tone that's associated with old film. Man, brilliant. And throwing your astronaut in the middle front. Oh, yeah. Oh. Straight up Wright Brothers genius. plane. Inventing the Oculus, I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> Making his pitch for Kaba to be part of our cyberpunk list. Right. <laughs> 
there's so many of his illustrations where I think like if I came up with that, I'd be so satisfied with myself. Oh, I know. Like he's just that guy, you know. This is so sick, dude, because it's like, is it different drawings? Like, is he just like doing different color samples? Is trying to figure out like the palette, uh, you know, if this is the last, you know, the final choice like are these the tryouts man i don't know what it is but i love it and these are like your shoulder pieces you know like the, the this little piece all in different patterns like what the heck is this yeah wow yeah like they, paper dolls by a master illustrator one of those pieces where it's like it would be nice to be able to read this so yeah. good at these bikes man and like so smart too it's like static you get to see the spokes. Close up, you get to see the spokes. Speed? Nah, dude. It's You don't see the spokes. Even the detail to, like, the cycling shoes. Yeah. Yeah, he, you just, know, he it, just zones in, man. It feels like there's a mental, like, there's a certain mental, I don't want to say preoccupation, but a wiring. Yeah. You know, that has this kind of obsession with the details and the pieces that fit together. And it reminds me of Jeff Darrow when he talks about, like, dr making, you know, his drawings. It's an understanding of what the thing is. Yes. Yeah. And I think that that's, you know, that's what the clear line forces you into. You know, like when Jeff is saying stuff like, well, I don't use black and I don't use shadow because I drew the thing. I, like, it's almost like I'm proving that I know how to draw the thing. You know, I don't want to cheat and, 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 you know, use the McFarlane philosophy of when in doubt, black it out. It's like, no, figure it out. Using several, like, there's, there's pencil in this. Mm. In fact, it's all pencil. Like, these outer lines yep. are definitely pencil. That would always blow my mind whenever it goes from pencil, and then you see, like... I mean, it's such a full, beautiful, lush, full-color illustration, and to think that it's pencil line... I mean, look, I've been drawing in pencil when it comes to color work, because I, I do think the color connects to the pencil easier. You ever see the video, and I don't know if it's, like, just a digitally manipulated CGI-type shit, but, like, it's this... Uh, these bike dudes will get full Superman... And like lean their legs out so like almost have the um seat like on their tummy like pelvis area and just fucking become so aerodynamic going yeah, ridiculously never seen quick i think it was a move that's like now outlawed like in these like big yeah races and stuff like that but like these dudes just do a full superman and and like it doesn't look like the wheels can sustain that's that a, feels once, like when it goes wrong you die you're getting really jacked up you're getting jacked up real bad for sure if it happens. Like I don't, I don't want to see that. Brilliant, uh, the art director that hires him to do this to to cover a race like that. Wow, yeah. stroke of genius. Yeah, I have a Ken Langriff uh, bike comic. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's a little different. He does some cool stuff. Like whenever we talk about writing in comics, and sometimes your captions will be somehow ch different or change the illustration right i feel like he does that in some of his drawings where it's like it's a sound drawing and then there's color put on top of it that's almost a different communication dude this is so cool it's a self-portrait and it's that humble desk where it's just like lap board you know we've seen him working at his stuff it's it's clearly storyboard paper where, where he's mm -hmm. drawing stuff but then there's like those sos characters just like is that like a whammy pedal like a like a guitar pedal. Um, it kind of looks cyberpunk. You got wires and stuff hanging out. Love all those little characters walking around. <laughs> Going Lord of the Rings. How sweet is this stuff, Jim? Yeah. As an animal lover, I gotta gotta sign off on this. Even his simple drawings are very exceptional. Yeah. Yeah, I think these are bumped up levels uh, for pencils. Mm -hmm. That's what this stuff looks like. Yeah, I think that was part of the digital revolution. Maybe it comes a little bit from animation too, but it definitely seems like a lot because a lot of the Hewlett stuff would go that direction. Check this out, man. It's his Batman black and white with some color built onto it. And uh, it's like, I don't know if he's doing the color, but he's... Somebody's trying out some digital, and it's bleeding edge. It doesn't work so well. Yeah, you can see, like, the word balloons, too, put on top of the art where they're translucent. Yeah, and you just see, like, you know, he didn't bump up the pixel count on the color and has that uh, halo. The, ba the banding, whatever you call that. Flare. Yeah, it's weird. Like, why do the... This must have appeared somewhere. Yeah. Somewhere in English. Wow, look at that, that digital... <laughs> early digital effect. In uh, in digital coloring, yeah, it really kind of brutalizes the work. 
you know, check out the Batman black and white. That's the real sexy stuff. I always liked the, his thoughtful, like, what would a bat signal look like against a, a really soupy sky? The, uh, the most Faustian Batman Atomo drawing. Yes, sir. I like the pin motif for, like, your chapters. Right. You know, animations. Yeah. Very thoughtful designer. You know, mm -hmm. he thinks about these whole packages. Looks like more animation pitch stuff. You see this stuff, and you could see that he would be buds with uh, Mobius. Yeah. In fact, Jeff Darrow said several times on the channel that, like, at Mobius's bedside when he passed away was this book, Kaba Two. I did not. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's interesting to note. Glad to hear that on this video. More pencil work, man. Just seeing him build these fucking crazy vehicles. When you see this kind of pencils, do you think this is a light box from a rough? Or something like like there's some bump up because you can't just do that. It's too clean and too complex, right? You, you just can't do that. You can't. No, I, I don't want to hear it. And even if he can, right? <laughs> I don't want to know about it. Let me have it because you know what? That, that this is a refined drawing. Because you know what, man? Like like I've seen Brendan Graham draw, and and he could do stuff like that just a straight ink. You know, like these there are guys that could just they it's just a different level of thinking, man. It is true. I think Mobius has talked about too, like that technique of visualizing it, you know, uh, yeah, very yeah, clearly before you go brain. down. Yeah, and I don't think that's kayfabe for some dudes. Like certainly, Kim Jong G comes to mind with some of the stuff we looked at, and he's a guy. Like he didn't, there was no like underdrawing on those pages. Yeah, you know what? I wonder if he worked that way though, of having it visualized, or if it was almost improv on the page. Because I think there's a group that does that too. Yeah. There's so many different ways brains work when it comes to this, or I guess to anything, but. It, and it's almost uh, just uh, different ways of saying the same shit. I'll tell you one thing I'll take away from a book like this. Yeah. The attention to backgrounds. Sure. Like, I never just sit around and draw backgrounds, and I should. Sure. Yeah, a lot of it's, lessons. It's a character, right? It is, man. And they talk about, you know, you can tell a lot by a person, like, what chairs they have. Love this stuff. Yeah, the storyboard stuff's so cool. Gundam came up in conversation a lot when I was in Japan as being a major influence on a lot of people out there. Man, Takashi, uh, Yo, who's Peach's partner, uh, Aki, the translator. Like, Gundam is gigantic. Very important to a, lo a lot of people. You know, we, we only just started getting that stuff mm -hmm. within the past 25, 30 years. But since the 70s, like, it just, like, had such an imprint. And the guy who did that comic that's translated to English, the Gundam, the Origins, like that's the dude, that's the OG guy, like came back and like made an origin comic. The guy who designed original mechas and all that. And he's the dude that's the big influence on all that. It's not like really just Gundam at whole, it's like that guy. So Interesting. Gundam, the Origin is a comic that you should scoop up sooner than later. Just great at designing these like these characters, you know, it's his SOS guys, the guys that we saw looking down that manhole, probably like an early attempt or something. See, that's very Hewlett-esque to me. Sure. And it's that ability, as you say, it's character design. Yeah. That would go on our matrix of um, cartoonist skills, you know, that ability to do great character design. And you do see it on a page like that where it is like all different shapes, all different heights. You know, it's, um, you'd recognize any of those characters by silhouette. Right. Wow. Again with these backgrounds, just unreal. That was like a, a layers, right? Like, yeah. like going from subterranean to up into the air. Right. Makes me think of uh, when we looked at steampunk. Yeah. And there's a moment where it's like you're coming from underground, the underworld, and it's so disappointing, once again, compared to something like this. Steampunk, the Chris Pachalo comic. Not to be confused with Steam Boy, the Katsuhiro Otomo anime. Right. Real interesting choice with that red for uh, for a lot of these elements in this story. Yeah, like all the machinery. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't expect that to work, and it looks great. Especially for, like, a gun, a cannon. And then, of course, that's a subterranean. That's hell, you know? So, like, when you hit the terrestrial, it's that's blues. Right. Exactly. And this is an explosion, right? Like smoke and an explosion it just looks like paint on a canvas. It does, yeah. You just the way you arranged it and smeared it around. Got to do what he wanted. 
I got this book, like Memory of Memories, uh, about the anim the anime, and there's a good sample of Otomo stuff. But it's it's a uh, everybody who had their hand in it. Uh, I got to just think of how how to phrase it to to make a good video out of it. But it, that's an accessible book that you can get for twenty thirty bucks. Hmm, I don't that, think I've seen that. That will not, you know, Otomo appreciates like. It's not all Otomo, but those books appreciate rather than go down, which is another reason why, like, I'm never going to get Kaba 2 as cheap as I got it. It only goes up. I mentioned earlier how he'll have these drawings that, that are part drawing, and yeah. then, like, the color's almost a different thing. That's a really good example where, like, the top half of that, clearly it's this character, but as you go down, it becomes just this whole different scene. Look at him in a studio with, like, a, what... 15 different canvases or this, something? This is great. This is your classic animation. Uh, I, I forget what that's called, but it's basically a pan like shot. panning up a building, you know, having the perspective built into like round. Yeah, yeah. So like, you know, like it, it, your fisheye, it's right mm -hmm. here and then it descends. See, it, so it's like the midpoint. Yep. It's a descent this way and a descent that way. Good fucking luck. And then you paint that. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous because it looks like you're you're moving a camera, except your camera is like the same distance and it's just the image moving, but it gives the effect of like you're spinning your camera up and down. Yeah, I mean, your panorama on your phone does that, but these guys ain't, ain't playing with digital. That was a practical piece of artwork. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> There's also an abundance of this stuff. You know, like these little kind of like, I, I don't want to say throwaway sketches, but you know what I mean. Like there's so many of these drawings that are just like thousands of pieces of tiny drawings. Yeah. Like, is he saving all this stuff? Is it all cataloged in his, <laughs> this looks like an answer to that question. That's like my back room. But, but I mean, is it like, you know, does he have apartments full of this stuff? Yeah. There's so much work, so prolific it seems. Look at that studio, dude. That looks like conducive to creativity right there, my man. Yeah, and that looks like you're working on some bike stuff, so you gotta have some real reference. And I think it's just his his life, you know, like walking culture, biking culture, big big time out there. Yeah. So there it is, people, man. Kappa two, is it worth it? You decide yourself. Uh, if you if you had just a finite amount of cash on hand, right? Like, and, and you have to make a choice. You know, you got 150 bucks. Do you get Genga? Do you get Kaba too? I would, for my money, I would say get Genga. Uh, you get to see the, it's more artist edition like. Uh, you get to see more of the process that way, which speaks to me personally. You know, this is more finished looking material, but that's the decision you have to make because I don't have to make that decision. It's got yeah, both. It's the, so, Sophie's choice of the time. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, because they're both of a comparable prices in a way. Kaba too costs a little bit more. Uh, so. Make your decisions, man. And uh, the King Kayfabers who are out there have uh, made those decisions before you get to see the video because they supported the channel early on the Patreon and uh, they're watching us stream this video as we speak. Uh, but Jimmy, give them, uh, let, let the people know what else is out there and we'll get the show on the road. Hulk Grand Design coming to comic shops in February. I recommend that you pre-order that or reserve that with your local comic shop because it recently blew up on Amazon. So those copies are going before it's even out on the streets and available for sale. So make sure you reserve that copy now. Street Angel, Deadliest Girl, of Al Deadliest Girl Alive, and Princess of Poverty and The Plain Janes also available from me. You can also join my patreon.com slash jimrug to see a lot more of my comics and artwork. You can download out of print zines and mini comics. And my latest post is a painting, a recent painting exhibition that you can only see on my Patreon. We're soliciting the next round of Red Room Comics for 2023 to your local comic shops right now. Red Room Crypto Killers issue number one is being offered at the moment. So get that put on your pull list. Uh, go tell your comic shops that you are interested and uh, get those orders on reserve. We're gonna be putting it out on a monthly basis once uh, once the train starts rolling. Two trade paperbacks of Red Room out there right now. Trigger Warnings and the Antisocial Network. Uh, you can get those at finer comic shops or Amazon, eBay, wherever. I'm serializing the new Red Room stuff on my Patreon uh, as we speak. More than 300 pages up there for the price of $3. Hip Hop Family Tree is celebrating its uh, 10 year anniversary in 2023 scoop those comics up x-men grand design and WYSIWYG. links to all that stuff in my link tree in the description below this video jimmy tell them what else subscribe to the cartoonist kayfabe newsletter at the links below this video you can also find cartoonist kayfabe t-shirts merchandise hats mugs stickers all kinds of stuff at our spread shop that link is also below this video
great ways to support the channel. Keep these train, keep these videos rocking. Giving those marching orders will be on our way, Jimmy. Make more comics.